Welcome to Overcoming Medica Hair Loss. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I am your host of this 21 day summit. And today I am with Jeffrey Paul. He's an entrepreneur, author, motivational speaker, and international expert in women's hair restoration and replacement. He assists men and women of all ages with hair thinning solutions that train thousands, and he trains thousands of professionals nationwide. Through his center and nonprofit Wigs for Kids, Jeffrey Paul has helped countless of women and children restore their hair and truly live again. I have to say, and truly live again. So thank you, Jeffrey, for being with us today. I'm so happy to have you. Well, I am blessed to be here with you. I'm so excited what you're doing. You're getting the people that really need some education that it's hard to find, and you're bringing it to them. 21 days. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty yes. exciting. Yes. Yes. And so today we get to talk about something that I am really passionate about, which is uh, our self talk, right? Like how do we see ourselves and how is that affecting us life experience, right? Because it affects our life experience completely. So there are three things that you highlighted on your book, Women's Hair Loss Solutions. Uh, and it's actually right behind you. If, if you guys can see it, uh, it's a beautiful book. I know we'll share more in a minute. Um, I want to I want to talk about the, those three things. So, how we see ourselves, how people see us, and how do we think they see us? Because the three of them have a huge impact in our lives. So, tell me a little bit more about that, Jeffrey. You know, in over forty years of doing what I did from beauty, because I started out with beauty, doing runway models, presidents of the United States, Saudi Arabians movies. I mean, it, it was a wonderful hairdressing world, but backstage on a major, major fashion show, uh, Valerie, the people that were beautiful, the gorgeous faces, the gorgeous bodies, the gorgeous hair had the chatter going on inside their heads that they weren't beautiful. They weren't attractive. They weren't all these things that we're looking at them and saying, what? Are you kidding me? And so often, when you roll that into someone who's going through the trauma and, and the difficulty of thinning hair or hair loss or alopecia or trichotillomania or whatever it might be, the chatter becomes shouting. And even when they look into the mirror, the difficulty is that chatter has created imprints in their mind of how they look. I look ugly. And they start to say those things. If not only silently in their mind, they begin to say those things. No one's gonna love me. No one's gonna, no one's gonna look at me. Or they're gonna make fun of me. And you know, I work with kids from two years old in my charity all the way up to a 100 year old woman that, that I do her hair and I did her hair for her 100th birthday and dance with her. But the difference is that chatter is within our head, we have to really silence it. Then the second chatter. Second chatter is what we think people think we look like. And that's even worse because it, it becomes another whole you know, language because we're looking at them and they'll make glance, and you probably had this experience, I'm sure, that you're watching for their eyes, where, where they're going to my eyes, and if they go to my, my hairline, I'm, I'm shot, you know, my confidence, my self-esteem, my feeling beautiful right down the drain. And now my posture drops, I feel awful. So that's the second one that we're dealing with. And then what people really think about us. And we never generally can hear that because the other chatter is, is going on. And the people that say to us, and, and, and this really happens, you are precious or you're wonderful or you're beautiful or I love you, doesn't go in because that chatter is too loud and there's no place for that thought to take place. So those are three things that we deal with. Now, it's not just people with hair loss and hair thinning, but it intensifies when alopecia or trichotillomania or female pattern hair loss is being addressed in their life. That even puts it on a, you know, it's like on steroids, these voices at that point. Mm -hmm. You find yeah. yourself with those voices? Oh, absolutely. And I, now that you mentioned that I was never able to have real connected conversations because I was always paying attention, like you said, to, to their sight, right? Are they looking at my hair or, you know, can they see that this is not real? Can they see that, the, that I'm losing my hair? And the moment I will see their eyes go somewhere, I will change the topic in the conversation. Right, right. So I, I probably sounded like somebody that was 
not all the way there because I would change the topic and change the topic and change the topic just to avoid them looking at my hair. Exactly right. Exactly. And yeah, so I had, I had those conversations every single day. Mm -hmm. really. And you know, that, that's really one of the things that uh, my clients and I, this is my greatest reward besides the smile on a child's face when we put a hair piece on in three weeks for kids. But one of the things that really excites me and is a goal of mine besides the hair, and we'll talk about that. But when the woman says to me, Valerie, I feel so good because I no longer have to think about my hair loss and the energy they feel come back into their life because the energy that drag, there literally is energy that's dragged out of all this processing of thoughts. And we've got a whole team of psychologists and, and, and image consultants that have helped me write my book, but also helped my clients. Mm -hmm. But it's important to realize there's an energy being lost. And mm -hmm. I don't care what age you, you're at. I mean, I love energy. I mean, I'm a Starbucks freak. I mean, I want more and more and more energy. But when I'm having a difficult time or I'm having a challenge or I'm having a bad day, if I don't shut down those feelings, those thoughts and replace them, because psychologists will teach us that you can't just say, don't think of the elephant in the room because immediately our thoughts go to the elephant. You've heard that right. example, I'm sure. But the truth of it is, is that you have to replace it. So if you're feeling, I'm not beautiful, you have to do what's in my book, begin to develop a series of affirmations that you look at yourself eyeball to eyeball and you look at the in your eyes because the eyes are the window of the heart and you begin to speak out loud to yourself. And I actually have mirrors that I give my, my clients to do this. It says, speak these words because I want them to begin to speak. I am beautiful. I am precious. I'm wonderfully made. I am liked by many. And I just go through a whole series of this, you are beautiful principles, because I am helping them replace that which they're saying to themselves and they're perceiving others are saying to them. And that becomes really powerful for them because, you know, can you imagine if somebody came and gave you a compliment and said, Valerie, you are just beautiful. Your eyelashes are so gorgeous. Your skin is so beautiful. I mean, immediately you know what goes off. The endorphins go off inside. You, you feel like you're a hundred, you know, you're a million dollars worth of, of beauty. And all of a sudden that energy goes in a positive way. If you're not doing that, if you're not hearing that from yourself, you're never going to hear it from anybody never. else. You're just never. not. Never. And um, I also agree with something you said in your book that you said you wouldn't talk to your best friend about their insecurities. Like you don't want, you wouldn't highlight their insecurities. So why don't we talk to ourselves like that? Why don't we say, like you will tell your best friend, if your best friend is having a bad day, you wouldn't say, oh yeah, it sucks that you're having a bad day. You will <laughs> say, wow, but listen, you are amazing. And I can see that you're creating all this beautiful stuff why are you feeling this way you will start highlighting the the positive things instead of the negative things and so we get to do that with ourselves we get to get up in the morning and actually that was one of the things that worked out that worked for me was to recognize that i am not my hair and i will literally get up and go to the mirror and say valerie you're not your hair you're not your out hair out loud right out loud out loud, absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, speaking about energy, the moment you start sharing those things and the moment you start feeling that way, you start showing that. It doesn't matter what your hair looks like. Let me tell you, you could have, you could just be woken up, like you just woke up, but if you're feeling radiant, if you're feeling excited, you're gonna look like that. My, I have two granddaughters who you can tell have me wrapped around their finger because I just love them. And I have a brunette and a blonde, right? And Giovanna and Valentina are the names. They come out of bed when they stay over our home. They come out of bed, right. brilliant, excited about life, beautiful, and their hair is like sticking up from both ends. And they're very ladies. I mean, they're little ladies. They like to comb their hair and braid their hair. But when we get up, it's how beautiful. they're thinking already. They have no worries. They have no cares. We have to regain. And I, I, wrote, a, I wrote a book uh, called uh, Metamorphosis, and it's in my book. So the yes. story is in my book. And that really came from ministering and sharing with people because of what you were just saying. Philippians 4.8, one of my favorite scriptures. And the basis is, think upon these things that are good, pleasing, beautiful, and lovely, and then put them into your life. Mm -hmm. That single verse really can intensify someone's life. Because I'm going to share what I learned in Italy 
from Michelangelo. And I wasn't there when he was there. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I was going to read that quote. It's amazing. I, I've aged really well. <laughs> but my, when I studied in, in hair and beauty and everything and learned how to make wigs and hair pieces there, they were right across from the museum of where Michelangelo had all of his works. And the David stood outside of the, the museum. And I remember this quote because we would go and learn how to sketch as Michelangelo, who did all the proportions of the face. And I do a whole portion of uh, how to pick what's the best shape of hair for you in my book. What's the best shape for your face, for your eyes, for your body shape. But he said this, and I really, really believe it with all my heart. He says, when you have a masterpiece, and I believe that every creation of God is a masterpiece, but you don't have a qualified frame around it. When you don't have the right frame around it, you lose the masterpiece within it. Mm -hmm. And that's us. If we don't have the outward frame, then we lose some of that. Mm -hmm. But if you're like my granddaughters and you feel beautiful and happy and you're, you're speaking the right language within yourself, you will be beautiful and the frame will come second. And that's what I share with all of my clients. I don't want it to be first about here because Hair is not only attached to the follicle, I say, it's attached to the heart, the self-esteem, the beauty, mm -hmm. the, the inner beauty, the real beauty. And I have seen and worked with some of the most beautiful models anywhere. And I've seen some of the ugliest insides of those individual models that I'm thinking about right now. And I've seen some of these people that have been burnt. I've seen some of these people that have gone through scalpings, a lot of the medical hair loss that we've taken care of. And some of these people are so beautiful. On my um, Renewing You Network, I do an interview with a woman who was literally scalped on, a, on an accident, on a job, and she had nothing but positiveness to say. I mean, and this was an amazing story of, mm -hmm. of looking at beauty, and even though we made her look beautiful, but the reality is she made herself beautiful from what she said inside each and every day, didn't complain. Even though she didn't like what she looked like, she didn't like what had happened to her, she lost her husband in the interim of it, if you can imagine that, all these things but she continued to coach herself. And again, one of the Psalms that I always remember is David had to encourage himself so that he could be more than a conqueror. I think that's what we have to do when we're going through challenges like hair loss. I love that. And I think that also goes to, how are you telling your story? Um, I had to change and reframe my own story about my hair loss. Because I used to say, Oh, I lost my hair when I was 18 and then I was diagnosed at 24 and it was hell. I didn't feel loved. I felt lonely. Um, I didn't think I was ever going to get married, that nobody was going to love me. So that's how I would share my story for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until recently, I want to say maybe five, seven years ago that I said, you know what, this is not how it goes because if it wasn't for my alopecia, I would have never discovered myself. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Talking to yourself. You're, you're so right on because it's a journey. It really is a journey. You know, your, your listening audience right now mm -hmm. might say, oh yeah, sure, I'm just gonna say I'm look beautiful and everything's gonna go peachy keen. No, it's an exercise like losing weight, mm -hmm. like doing anything else, it's an exercise. But you need to start. And as you said, as you start that, it really begins to change if you continue to persevere and continue to persevere and continue. When you fall down, get up. Mm -hmm. It's really important that you have people around you yes. that you trust. And I'm sure you, you had to have, because you, you came out as beautiful as you are inside and out, not because it was all about you and you did everything on your own effort and strength, but you need your, your good friends, your, your solid friends that'll be honest with you. You need a spiritual life. You need, you know, you need a continual purpose in life. When you put those together, you become more whole. And it changes the game from completely because when you go through hair loss, whatever it is, you go to the doctor and you went through this, I'm sure back at 17 and 24, and the doctor tells you you have alopecia or you have cancer, or you have trichotillomania, or you have all these, and then you go to the next doctor and you say, do you need help? And he says, there's nothing to help you. Go get a wig. And I've heard them say that kind of word, like the last resort to go get a wig. And the truth of it is that the hopelessness and the defeat that comes upon, especially a woman, I mean, I, we have tissues in every one of our rooms, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially our consultation room, which we, we consider a holy grail of area. And that really is important that you feel trustworthy with the people that you're working with, 
They're going to tell you the right things. They're not going to give you an expectation that is unrealistic. That really begins to path the way to success at that point. Right. And I, and I wanted to touch on that with you as well as the support, right? We also get to have support. We don't have to do it all alone. And, and I know you have a fabulous team that can help us through this with a total approach. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? It, the, the, it all starts at the consultation. Mm -hmm. I believe the consultation is art and um, psychology working together to be able to give the beauty inside and out. And so we do a completely no expense, complimentary, hour long consultation. No one's in a rush. Up front, I tell them, I don't want you to buy anything. I don't want you to purchase anything. I want to find out about you. I want you to find out about us. That's the beginning of our bridge of trust. Then number two, I want to educate you. I want you to ask the questions you haven't even asked maybe your husband or your best friend or your doctor. I want to help educate you to make an educated decision, not an emotional decision, because this is very emotional. It is. And then I hear this. Tell me if you've ever felt this way. Well, I feel so guilty because I don't have cancer or I don't have this and I feel so guilty. And I nip that right at the bud in the consultation because this is not about fashion. This is not about vanity. This is about the framework that Michelangelo talks about that God created the masterpiece and we're just gonna be working around his masterpiece, but the masterpiece has to come from within. And I, really, I, mean, I start most of my consultations like that and bring that in, in anxiety. You remember what it was like to go into the salon or go into the hair replacement center. The anxiety is, what are you going to get, be another hopeless effort or somebody's going to try to pitch you on buying something? We take all that away, put all the defenses down, and we become friends. We become trustworthy partners in the journey. This is what mm -hmm. I talk about through the book. It's a journey. And I just I want to just coach them and help them and support them. And in the interim, get some hair, get some makeup tips, get some nutritional tips, Get some spiritual inspiration, but also know that they have to go out and pass it forward as well. And that's what makes the difference. Absolutely. And I am discovering that through the summit, that is definitely a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe for, with, from my own experience that to live with my hair loss, because I don't like the word dealing with hair loss, to live with my hair loss, mm -hmm. I have to... First of all, like you said, it's a daily practice. Sure. It's not because I feel great to, today that I'm going to feel great tomorrow in my change. Tomorrow I might feel down and I'm going to have to redo it all over again. So number one is a daily practice. Just like number you're making. Yeah. Like <laughs> you have to redo it every day, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And it is absolutely a holistic approach. It's not only am I wearing extensions or am I wearing a hairpiece or am I wearing a wig? is not that is how's my nutrition am i sleeping well um do i have a support system mm -hmm. um like you said your faith your soul how are you doing how's your purpose and so that's why i created the summit because i i understood that it wasn't that one solution that was going to change my life that was gonna that was gonna make the change, right? Because even when, like you said, when I got the hair piece, yeah, that was great. Yes, I look like I have more hair. But did I really believe that I was beautiful when I looked at myself in the mirror? No. I actually thought worse because I thought people were looking at my hair piece and thinking, oh, she has fake hair. Mm -hmm. So it really is a holistic approach. You gotta you gotta be strong with your habits, you gotta be uh you know, strong with your faith, with your soul, with your purpose. It's, it's, it's a whole thing. So on that note, I know there, because we do need that support, right? With that everyday support and a holistic approach. I know you do have a fabulous gift for our audience that can help them in that process. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I'm really excited about this because we've created this just for your audience. Wow. And we're going to have, you know, the link down in the show notes that we're going to create for them an ebook that will have the ability for them to have the total approach to their beauty. And it could be for their daughters, their mothers, their grandmothers, and for themselves. So it, it's, it's holistically designed to be able to help 
each and every one of us look beautiful as we look in the mirror. I'm going to have a series of those beautiful affirmations that I talked about inside there. I'm going to have some beauty tips. I have some nutritional tips that makes the skin and hair better. And some of the tips on even how to take care of hair pieces that make it look more natural. So it's going to be a collage that I think is going to be one of a kind and exclusively for your audience because I am so blessed that you have Take it. Nobody knows the work behind what you've gone through to put a summit together. I've done it, and I know that you sometimes go home with pulling your hair out or whatever you're pulling. It is really problematic at times. But you didn't give up, and you're on your way now to the, sharing the summit across the world. And I'm so proud of you. And, and, you know, we're new friends, but I want to tell you something. I think it's a long, long friendship because you're right where I want to help people get to. I want people to get to that point so they can feel good enough to go do what you're doing. Press it forward. Do something positive with what seems like a, ne a lemon. Because I always believe you can take a lemon and be sour, or take a lemon and make lemonade out of it and enjoy life, whatever the circumstances are. Yes, thank you. And I want to leave you guys with that. From, from this interview, if you get to go home right now and think about this, what is the one positive thing that your hair loss has brought into your life. And hold on to that. And hold on to that tomorrow morning. And just, just keep that in your heart. And as you also learned today, it's not one thing that's gonna bring the solution, right? It's a holistic approach. How are you living your life? So thank you, Jeffrey, so much for being with us today. What you've created, all the work you've been doing, I cannot wait to continue this relationship. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And God bless you. You are beautiful inside and out, and I know your audience sees that. 